Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Ignite podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Josh Stone. I am the founder of Ignite Coaching. I work purely with business owners and business leaders of engineering consultancies to help them grow and scale their teams and their businesses. So team, what I want to do today is talk to you about why it's so important to fit your oxygen mask first. So coming into Christmas, another year, crazy that another year has uh, has gone past us, but it is the same every year. I noticed a tendency for our industry and it's, it's cyclical. I know industries go through cycles, but typically the run into Christmas is insane. And then for some reason, January, February fall apart and then we pick ourselves back up again in March. Although I am working with my boardroom clients to fix that because I don't want low cash flow in January and February. It doesn't make sense if there's things we can do in the last quarter of the year to fix that. Anyway, side note. So it is just typically insane. And what can happen is, and I was talking to clients about this this week, you know, they have literally planned out to the day their workload running into Christmas in terms of whatever person on their team is doing, project deadlines, deliverables, who's doing what, et cetera, et cetera. They've planned that out to, you know, kind of to the day in terms of like, ah, we can make it. And then what always happens is a client goes, oh, I just need this done before Christmas. Another client goes, oh, I just like this done before Christmas. Another client goes, I just like this done before Christmas. And someone's like, oh, you know, that like deadline of like, Last week in, in, in December, can we bring that forward two weeks because I'm going on holidays? And so what happens is, you know, even though you do all this planning, there is stuff that happens, stuff that falls in your lap as a business owner or leader, and it like just creates chaos. And what can what happens is if you have an overactive people please a part of your personality or a tendency to want to say yes to everything, which by default is the people pleaser part of your personality. Anyway. You yourself can end up working stupid, stupid hours with this kind of mindset of just got to get it done, just got to get it done, just got to get it done. And like, I can take a break over Christmas, can take a break over Christmas. But the problem with this approach is, and I know it's going to be busy, and I know there's things you have to say yes to, and I know that there's certain particular clients that when they say jump, you know, you kind of say how high kind of thing, because they're a great client, they're a great payer, they give you lots of work, all those sorts of things. I get all of those nuances. But you have to look after yourself first. You have to fit your oxygen mask first. There is no point you running hard for the next, you know, six weeks, burning yourself out, and then you fall in a heat Christmas. You're not fun for anyone. Like you just take a week to recover because you are actually burnt out or you, you know, you need to catch up on all this sleep. You need to look after yourself and manage yourself through this process. So if we have a tendency to say yes to everything, even when we have a full workload, you know, that just means often with clients that I'm working with, they take that on because they're like, oh, you know, and particularly in this skill shortage, skills shortage market at the moment where, you know, most people are antsy about pushing their team too hard because what if they leave? What if they go somewhere else? What if they get an offer and, you know, you, you put in this, this package of work in front of them is the thing that tips them over the edge and they, they quit before Christmas. Like I get that. We're, we're dancing around this too in terms of you don't want to push your team too hard because of the fear of team leaving and going for a better offer somewhere else. However, side note, if your culture is really good and you're talking to your team all, your time, all the time and they have a say in all this sort of stuff, that becomes a non-issue. So work on your culture too and you, you, know, you don't have that issue with people leaving. But if you have this tendency to not want to push your team too hard, they're already at, you know, 120% utilized or 110%, 150%, you tend to take it all on. And so you're the one doing all the crazy hours and working weekends and that sort of stuff, sort of telling your family and your friends, oh, well, we'll catch up over Christmas or this will be fine when it's, when Christmas is here. I just don't think it's sustainable. It's not fun. Like let's, let's really be conscious about fitting our own oxygen mask first. And so what does that look like? So there's a couple of things that I want to talk to you about today in terms of fitting your own oxygen mask first. Firstly, as much as you possibly can, you manage your days and you manage your weeks according to your energy. In terms of if you know that you're an early morning person and that your energy is good in the morning and that you think best in the morning, 
Well, you structure your day so there's no meetings in the morning. You structure your days so that you get up, maybe you get to the office early. You get all of your big ticket items done first up in the morning. You move all your big rocks forward so that when inevitable fires happen around lunchtime or in the afternoon, as they always do, you know, you have free time and you feel good about your start to the day because you set your day up right. So, but if you're a nighttime person or an afternoon person, well, then put your meetings in the morning or your phone calls in the morning and make yourself available to the team in the morning. And then you have your big picture thinking in the afternoon. So think about setting up your days and your weeks based on you, not your clients, not your team, you. So focus on you and go sit down of a Sunday and just go, you know, what's my week ahead look like? Can I move that meeting? Can I shift that thing? Even better, you just have that time religiously blocked out. If you're a morning person and you have the first two hours of your day blocked out for strategic work, big rocks, that sort of thing, that's that's sacrilege. Oh, that's not that's not the right word. That's you know you, you've got that <laughs> you've got that time blocked out, um, and you don't put stuff in your calendar. No one can put stuff in your calendar for the first two hours of the day because that's your time to get stuff done. So the first thing is set your days up correctly and your weeks up correctly based on you. Not your clients, not your team, but you. The second thing is to practice saying no. You have to, sorry, go to go back to the, the setting your day up properly, create spaces and pauses in your day. If you want to go for a run at lunch, you know, and you've got that party personality going, I don't have time to go for a run or I can't go for a quick walk around the block or anything like that. If you are wired and burnt out and, you know, you're not thinking straight, that 20 minute run or that 20 minute walk around the block is going to mean that you are so much more effective for the afternoon as opposed to this pusher achiever part of your personality that's just driving you to do 10 hours straight because you're so busy. So again, we are looking at fitting your oxygen mask first. Set your days and your weeks up right based on what you need and how you work best and create breaks. We are not robots. We cannot work for 10 hours straight. And if we do, we are not effective. So creating blocks in your days or pauses in your days to just get out of the office, talk, think, all that sort of stuff, reset your energy to go again for that next two or three hour block. So be really conscious about your days. Second point, practice saying no. You will get to a point where the 16th client comes to you and says, I want this thing done before Christmas. You will have to say no. It is physically, I am so sorry, it is physically impossible for us to get that delivered. And I want to talk to you about ways to have these conversations with clients because a lot of the times I find my clients don't question their clients. They just assume, oh, well, my client wants this done before Christmas. My client wants this done by the start of December. My client wants this done by the end of November. No one sorts of stops to question their clients and just ask, open questions to find out whether that deadline is actually true or not so you can you know client calls you steve rob mary josh i need this done by december okay that's going to take a bit of rejiggling of our of our resources because i hadn't quite factored that in uh to our workload do you mind if i just ask you a couple of questions about this particular project or about this particular piece of work just to find out how we might be able to accommodate you. And what I often find is if you start to ask questions, open questions about tell me a bit about the project, can you tell me why you need it by the start of December? Okay, and a lot of the times it's just a date they had in their head. A lot of the times it's they're going away in two weeks and they just want it done. Sometimes it actually is, it needs to be done by that date, but I find Eight out of 10 times, if you ask open questions, can you just tell me a bit more about that project? Can you just tell me a bit more about why that deadline is so important? And what does that affect if we didn't get it done by that date? And so if it was like, well, is the court proceeding and it needs to get done? Okay, well, that's a hard and fast date. But it's like, oh, and like I said, eight out of 10 times, talking to your client about that, they're like, oh, yeah, I suppose actually a couple of, you know, once you've talked me through this time frame, yeah, a couple more weeks would, would make sense. Or you know what, January is actually fine because... Cancel, don't check anything over Christmas anyway. So instead of just accepting what your client says as gospel, you're not being rude, you're not pushing back, you're not being mean and narky. You're just saying, okay, we hadn't factored that in. Can I ask you a few questions to just find out how we might be able to accommodate that? 
And like I said, eight times out of 10, you either get an extension of two weeks, a month, or it gets pushed into the new year because those deadlines for you asking your clients questions and them hearing them say ridiculous things back to you, like it needs to be in a week's time. They're like, they actually then stop and go, yeah, this is actually crazy. That's not going to get done by then. It's going to be 70% right, 60% right. I need it 100% right. So let's go the new year. So there's the, there's the asking open questions. Yes, you're pushing back on your clients and you're practicing saying no. And all of these trigger the people pleasing aspect of our personality that we talked about at the start in terms of we're always saying yes, it's because we want our clients to like us. And leading into the end of the year, fitting your oxygen mask first doesn't necessarily look like your clients loving you and liking you. Sometimes you've got to have hard conversations. Sometimes you've got to say no, you have to look after yourself first. Because if you're taking everything on, you're tired, you're burnt out, you're doing 15-hour days, 16-hour days, 20-hour days, whatever it, whatever it looks like, do you think you're an effective leader? Do you think you're an effective manager of people if you're on four hours sleep and you've got 18 coffees in your system? Like, you're just not the best version of yourself. And to get the most out of your team and have the most successful run into Christmas this year, you have to be at the top of your game which means structuring your days, saying no, going for lunchtime runs, getting enough sleep, spending time with your family, doing fun stuff because life's too short. Don't spend the next six weeks burning yourself into the ground just to get to Christmas and spend a week recovering and missing all the time with your family anyway. So team, you have to fit your oxygen mask first. The leadership game is you are the one people look up to you, up to. You're the one setting the bar for how you want the team to operate. And if you're a people pleaser, you're saying yes to everything, you're burning yourself into the ground, guess what your team's doing? You have to lead by example and show that mental health and physical health and all that sort of stuff is important, the most important thing. So fit your oxygen mask first, look after yourself, have an amazing run into the Christmas and actually get to and spend the Christmas break with your friend, friends, family and loved ones and actually enjoy it. So Seema, I hope you take this message on board. Please fit your oxygen mask first. Look after yourself. Be the leader. That way you can lead your team and your business more effectively. And if you'd like some help with this stuff, I love working with my clients around this sort of thing. So please don't hesitate to reach out. We can have a chat about how I can help you grow and scale your team or your business. But Tina, that's it for me today. Have an amazing rest of your week and talk to you all soon. Ciao.